Hey there, I just want to thank you so much for tuning into this video and for all of the support and for subscribing to the channel and everything. I really, really appreciate it. So today's video is going to be all about beta oxidation. So let's get into it. Okay, so really important to know where these metabolic activities are happening. These are very frequently tested on topics and so you should know them really well. So it happens in the liver and the muscle, specifically in the mitochondria. So one thing you have to understand is how you get the fatty acid into the mitochondria. And that is through something called carnitine. Carnitine will come up in test questions on beta oxidation. It's something that they like to test on, so definitely have to know about carnitine. So just an overview of what this picture is. This little red line here is the blood, and then this is a little fatty acid moving through the blood. Here we've got a liver cell, and then a mitochondria right here. And then we've got this little black thing. This circle is the called the fatty acid transporter. Don't really have to know that, but that's how you're getting the fatty acid from the blood into the liver cell. And then on the membrane of the mitochondria, you have this thing called carnitine acyl transferase 1. I bolded this one because you definitely have to know about carnitine acyl transferase 1. This is a really important enzyme in beta oxidation. So it's the regulatory enzyme of beta oxidation. Malonal CoA inhibits this enzyme. So if you remember uh, back to the, our other video where we talked about malonal CoA, we're thinking about malonal CoA as a beta oxidation shot blocker. And it's in the outer membrane of the mitochondria. So carnitine acyl transferase 1, regulatory enzyme of beta oxidation. It's inhibited by malonal CoA. And it's what transfers the fatty acid into the liver mitochondria. And so this is a 16 carbon fatty acid. So we have beta oxidation occurring and you get some products. So sometimes you'll get questions asking you about the product of a certain carbon length of fatty acid. So maybe a 16 carbon length or 18. And so what we get is acetyl-CoA and we get eight of them. So all we do is we just take the carbon chain and we just divide it in half and that's how many acetyl-CoA's we get. And then the acetyl-CoA is going to be fed into the Krebs cycle. And then the energy products of the Krebs cycle are NADH, FADH2, and ATP. And I just want to make it clear here that I'm not being specific about the number of these products that are made. I'm just saying that those are what are made kind of a just basic explanation of what is made in the Krebs cycle. And then those electrons from these guys get kicked into the electron transport chain. So here we have just a table that's kind of breaking down the main differences between beta oxidation and fatty acid synthesis. So what energy state does it occur in? Beta oxidation occurs in a starving state. Fatty acid synthesis occurs in a full state. So if you're going to have enough energy to synthesize something, then you're going to be full. If you're hungry and lacking energy, then you're going to be doing beta oxidation. Where does it occur? Beta oxidation happens in the liver and muscle mitochondria, and then fatty acid synthesis happens in the liver cytosol, the transfer slash shuttle. So for beta oxidation, we just looked at how the carnitine enzyme brings the fatty acid into the liver mitochondria. So we've got the carnitine shuttle, and then for fatty acid synthesis, we've got the citrate shuttle. And if you want to hear more about that, I talk about that in the fatty acid synthesis video. What do we start with? With beta oxidation, we start with a fatty acid. With fatty acid synthesis, we're starting with one malonal CoA. And remember, it's many acetyl CoAs being added onto that with the fatty acid synthase enzyme. And then what do we end with? We uh, end with as many acetyl CoAs with beta oxidation. Remember, we just divide it in half, and then that's our product. And then fatty acid synthesis starts with palmitate. So, what are the redox cofactors? With beta oxidation, you've got NAD plus and FAD. And then with fatty acid synthesis, you're using energy NADPH. And then the inhibitors, malonal CoA is going to inhibit beta oxidation. That's the beta oxidation shot blocker. Fatty acid synthesis is going to be inhibited by a high concentration of fatty acid. You're going to have a that feedback loop. It's going to turn it off. And then a high epinephrine or low energy states. Okay, so this picture right here is a liver cell. And we're going to start 
talking about something called a ketone body. So we're just going to look